All right, I'm gonna call the meeting to order. So can you do a roll call, please? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hines. Here. Bentley. Here. Popper is excused. Walker. Here. Right. Okay, so uh, approval of report. Anybody have any changes to the minutes as no. written? No. Okay, so they're approved. And I have nothing just to note that we were off last month. So today we're continuing the discussion of that meeting on the um, replacement of the MOD office building. And then we're uh, introducing the 2025 capital budget. Um, and so then we have the marketing task force update. Sure. So just a brief update. Uh, the task force has had, has had two meetings. We were joined this week by Aya and Pranjali. I'm not gonna pronounce their last names because I don't know how to do that. There are two MBA students from the Haas School of Business who are participating through the Board Fellows Program. Uh, and their fresh perspective, along with the diverse input from the task force members, has really been outstanding. This week, we heard a presentation from Andriana Mendez about branding, which was terrific as we move towards developing a brand refresh for Rossmore. Next month, we'll be focusing on marketing vision, uh, I'm sorry, mission, vision, and target audiences. The goal is to outline a marketing plan for Rossmore by the board's February deadline, but we may need some more time as we dig into lots of details that we need to get through. So uh, stay tuned. So far, so good. Okay, thank you, Dwight. Uh, next, we have the capital projects update. I'm just going to put this up on my. So the document, um, I do apologize for those that are looking at this on the computer only. It is a little bit um, difficult, but we do have the versions on the table for those of you that are in the room, if you'd like a copy. So um, this is the updated capital projects list. So this shows where we are and all the active projects that we have. Um, and as you're gonna, when you're gonna start seeing in the comments, or we're going to be able to know more precisely the ones that we're going to finish this year and we'll start to see if we kind of know we're going to carry them over. And it's going to be more of a connection toward um, with this and then what you're going to see in the last item, which is the whole capital projects discussion. Um, I think you all know that we have this. It's not a version thing. It's the timing of when we report to finance versus this committee. Mm -hmm. So I at least want to have like the projections updated here. So you're gonna see that consistent. So it may look a bit more updated than finance, but then in two weeks at finance, it's gonna be updated again. So updates are probably gonna happen like every other week now. Um, but you have kind of the most current information that's been published. Um, so going through uh, the projects, we do have a couple of straggler projects happening with um, the gateway renovation. Um, and it's really just the solar shades and the installation of the AV. And all the stuff was ordered, it's here. They just need to be installed. Um, for the pickleball courts, we just submitted our, our fourth round um, response to Walnut Creek. Um, hopefully this will be the last and won't be any uh, requests for information. Um, in the last turn, there are lots of like detail things. It's nothing that's uh, alarming, just standard details they like to have in place. So when they put a packet together to take us to design review, it's complete. They're trying to make sure they have everything there so then there's no more questions from a design review board. And we are um, planning to get to that body by the end of this year. We're also going to do something with um, somebody that we know wants to bid on the project. We are gonna have a competitive bid on the project, but what we're going to do is to do a pre, um, like a pre-construction cost estimate by one of those companies. So we know it'll end up being conservative and maybe on the high side, because at that point it's not conservative, but we should have that by the next meeting. So when you're looking into the projections, um, it's, it's better, more accurate information so we can make decisions about 2025. For the Tice, who, on, oh, go ahead. Just on the pickleball, so, on, so the review board is gonna have this back to us they're scheduled by December. Is that back to us in December no, or are they no. going so to look at it in December? So what they do is they look at it. If they approve it, then it has to go to the planning committee. So we may not have our permit until like January, February. 
Mind you, we didn't want to start construction until March. So it gives us time to look at the cost estimate, you know, put it out to bid, but at least we know what we're working with. We can still plan while those processes are going through. The meat of what happens in the compliance process, which is getting your permit, that's all happening right now. David is, uh, David Massington is on Zoom to talk about, you know, the space study. Um, I don't know if you had any other questions about that. No, we're, but but we're in good shape. Right, but, right. And all the permits, we're not actually going to put money out for the permits until we're like really close to where we think we're going to, because we don't want that money hanging out there and have to wait a month to, you know, because there aren't the permits on a timeline, right? You, so you, you pay for the, the, the review work. process, so the work that they're putting in, we have to fund <laughs> that as we go. But an actual permit itself, you won't pull until it's it's ready and we have a, a contract in place and the board has awarded a contract for construction and we're, we know we're going to go. If we don't pull the permit, yes, it does have a lifetime uh, how many months it's good for until you have to read up it. For the Tice pool roof structure, we're going to begin work on that um, a week from Monday. So that's all good news. The alternate transfer pump. So just so you know, there's a corrections from expenditures we thought were attributed towards this project and it actually was for the golf pump, one of the two big pumps. Um, as the alternate transfer pump is actually is being absorbed in the operating budget because it's no <coughs> fixes. It's nowhere, it's no longer really meeting the threshold of our capital. So you won't see any more reporting on that. For NetSuite implementation, as everyone knows, it's underway. Um, and you're going to see, a, I think, a little bit of a, I think we have the um, difference of the projection in here for the year end. So we do have it updated, and then you'll see when we talk to capital what's expected for next year. Excuse me there. So do we do we have some detail behind that? I, I'm, I'm really confused on where the we next are. The implementation? Yeah. yeah. So I think we're getting another report. We'll uh, have Todd come and do an update on that in terms of what they're finally reconciling in terms of capital and, and operating. Uh, so we, we are hoping to do that at the end of this month. Because that has an impact on both budgets for mm -hmm. 2025. Mm -hmm. right. um, okay. Hoping to have it or we will have it? Uh, hoping to have it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, for the golf bridge replacement, work continues on that. It's still a lot of the civil work that's happening. Um, so hopefully we'll have everything we need to put the construction documents together and build it next year. For the, um, I'm out of order. Okay, for the network gear replacement, that was a lot of the equipment necessary to kind of upgrade our systems to optimize it. Um, so we're almost complete with that. You'll see that the um, year end projected is a little bit lower than what was funded. And uh, just a little spoiler alert, we're not projecting expenditures in that in future years. We are not. No. no. So no the numbers that are listed here are, should be correct. Right. So we're, right. so we're yes. going to take those out. Yeah. And you'll see that when we talk about the 2025 capital. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, and so what I would just, so say is everything that you see here on the right side of the blue line mm -hmm. is how we proposed it to you with a couple of small changes when we knew early on. Like with pavement, we knew early on that was going to drop by about right. No quarter of a million. So we wanted to do that. Um, for Buckeye tennis courts, that is complete. Oh, I'm so sorry. I skipped everyone. Tice pool and spa replastering. Mm -hmm. um, we did have an issue with the vendor. And so we um, canceled that contract. We're rebidding it. And so we'll, we'll probably uh, do the work next year because we are going to have to create a whole new schedule for a different closure of the pools. Are we in our, so if we're going to put that off for a year, I know that the health department has this, uh, so many years that has to be done or something like that, that we have to take care of it. We're not going to be pushing that envelope too much, are we? We're, we're, okay, with, okay. we're okay with that. All right. And then there's an additional 110 in 2028. Is that in a- That's another pool. That's an, so oh, it's, oh, oh, it's another okay. pool. Yeah, so it says Tice pools. It's really, we just said, we just want people to know it's kind of the maintenance that you do when you have pools and there's another one coming at us. Maybe you should say tight or all pools. I think I changed it in the project in the 2025 just to say pool. Okay, cool. 
uh, for Buckeye tennis courts, we did complete that project and um, did a little bit of repair work to the Creekside pickleball courts. Mm -hmm. For the event center rehab, we are done with that. So the event center is good to go and we've been scheduling programs in there since the 1st of October. Uh, the pavement program, it's uh, right now they're finishing the striping for probably about another couple of weeks. Um, and then that will be completely closed out. Um, we're gonna, we'll be updating the year on projection. We think it's gonna be at least 100,000 under budget. Which be good. Under the 960. Under, okay. yeah. For the roof replacement program, um, this line item, the 165, um, for this year was the existing skylights that are at the Tice Fitness Center. Uh, the project is proving to be a little bit more complex because it's not like for like because of the age of the skylight that was part of the original architecture. And so we're working on um, a plan to figure out how we replace that properly. And in the meantime, it's, it's uh, I, I know when we were talking about the pool roof and the delay of that, it was very difficult to go and try to tarp in case of some issue because there's no tie downs. If for some reason we're having one of those real torrential years and we don't have the work done, it's a little bit easier to find tie downs to protect that roof should it start leaking. <clears throat> For median turf replacement, uh, that project is complete. The golf course pump replacement, um, this project is underway. So we wanted to, to um, replace one pump this year and one next year, and the, they're uh, about halfway done with that. I'm just on the back side of my paper. Can I see? That one. There. So I think there's more projects. Are we missing some? Oh, we're down to golf course. There we go. Well, I'll just do it on this. Yeah. Okay. So the golf course water conservation program. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, so we have a few about that. Yeah, the lake liner. Here we go. The oh, lake yeah. liner. Okay. So there is no change in the project for that. Um, there was funding approved to start doing the study, and Fred is really just kind of putting together the information on that, so mm -hmm. we kind of know what we're dealing with for the project. For Gateway Solar, I think everyone can see, it's really exciting mm -hmm. to have a project where you can actually see uh, the progress of it. And so um, they're really going out aggressively. They're trying to uh, beat the schedule <coughs> that they told us, um, but everything's going without any issue there. And for the emergency control, Emergency for the emergency control facility emergency generator replacement that was just approved at the board last month. And so um, we bid out the project and now we're um, reviewing the contract with the company that we'd like to move forward with. I think we just had your insurance approved today. Okay. So then everything below the black bar are things that are not funded. I know there was a desire to have more updates on the golf water conservation projects. The reason why that's not funded is because it's the uh, vendor would not be available to do the work this year. Um, so you're going to see that, and most of these other ones appear on the next budget, with the exception of uh, the pedestrian vehicle safety project study, because we have ways to address things more focused through the operating budget, should it need study. Are there any other questions on this one? Just uh, going back a little bit, just on one, on the, on the tight roof structure, yes. when they come in and do that, how is that, do, oh, is the gym gonna still be able to be working or are we shutting down the whole facility? No, or? so the nice thing about this is most, so everything can be staged from behind the oh, fitness okay. center. Um, okay. So a lot of people, I don't even know if they know about the little area yeah. behind the fitness center, it's pretty sizable. So they're gonna be able to do everything and even like the reach, like the crane that they have, they believe they can do everything from there. Okay. So we just were finishing so the street's free and all that stuff. They're just the pool will close down for yes. that time they're doing that. Yes. Okay, great. And um, we also be um, locating certain programs in the other pools so people can still keep their water aerobic schedule. So. Any other questions? Okay, let's move to unfinished business and start with the MOD replacement update. Okay, so this is the item we brought to you now a, a couple months ago and did some updates to the, the report and presentation based on your initial feedback. 
So uh, again, this is the priority that was identified in the um, facilities master plan. It's also tied into the discussion that we've been having regarding the uh, reuse or potential sale of the medical center property. And most importantly, the, the updating and replacement of the mutual operations division. It ties into the facilities master plan also in relation to uh, future uh, facilities down here at Gateway to accommodate additional, additional use which also ties into your uh, current food and beverage study as well. Mm -hmm. So some of the options that were included in the analysis include uh, option one, this is purely to rebuild MOD in place. Uh, it's about a 12,000 square foot facility. You would uh, tear down and re redo in place consistent with about the same size structure. Uh, you would have to, for comparison purposes, then look to build 6,500 square feet of additional space down here at Gateway to accommodate those other uses. The other option, uh, option two, is to renovate the medical center property uh, to provide about 23,000 plus square feet of office space to house MOD and GRF administration. This option allows uh, for renovation of approximately 6,500 square feet here at Gateway for future residential use. And then option three uh, is to build a new ground up office building on the current MOD campus. So perhaps up the upper lot, but still some uh, analysis would need to take place that would house both MOD and GRF administration. The medical center property could be sold and then that would allow for about repurposing of the 6,500 square feet down here at Gateway. Some of the feedback that uh, we received, we talked about the size of <clears throat> the office space at the medical center. Uh, the last presentation, we talked about it being about 30,000 square feet, which includes both the basement and the uh, second floor of that uh, facility. There is definitely additional cost and complications in using that space. Uh, for the needs of GRF and uh, including MOD, it's about 23,300 square feet. And David's gonna actually go into the space study uh, for that in a little bit. The size of the office space for a new ground up office building at MOD campus also was reduced from 30,000 to the 23,000 square feet, so it matches. And then we talked about if one of the options was to sell the medical center, the net proceeds estimate is about $10 million. Uh, certainly that is plus or minus depending on what we eventually sell it for if it was sold. Some of those proceeds, when we talk to the bank, they say they, they may consider needing to put them uh, on deposit with the bank, uh, about $5 million as security for remaining loans. If we did that, that would leave uh, $5 million available to help fund some of the other projects. Uh, so we used a, a factor of $5 million in um, putting towards uh, construction if that was an option. So can you throw up the presentation there. Yep. Like Starting option one. What's that? Presentation? Yeah. yeah. So again, option one is to renovate the existing MOD building uh, and construct 6,500 square feet of new active use space at Gateway and then consider selling the medical center to help fund uh, some of those projects. The pro of this is it eliminates some of the existing current problems at MOD with that building uh, by modernizing it and, and constructing a new space. But there are certainly more cons to this option compared to the others. It requires temporary relocation of the existing MOD offices while you construct that. 
It really doesn't address a lot of the issues with MOD in terms of interface with the, the residents and uh, folks coming up there for business. Uh, it doesn't alleviate any of the overcrowding. Uh, it does not add needed meeting or conference room spaces. Uh, it does not provide any future leasable space for vendors and residents still will get a very similar back of the house experience. And then new construction at Gateway, if you added 6,500 square feet here, you already have some parking challenges that would add additional space and square footage here, uh, which may be compounded with, with parking. Uh, it is the lowest cost uh, option at 12 million. And then if you uh, put 5 million towards that from the sale of the medical center, uh, that reduces further. Option two, renovate the medical center property and relocate MOD GRF admin to that space. Um, there are several pros in that it centralizes all administration in one location, which is helpful for uh, the, the operation, but it's also beneficial for residents in that it creates kind of a one-stop shop. It expands resident space at Gateway without increasing overall campus square footage, resolves interface issues at MOD between commercial and active resident use. Uh, you could potentially lease out the current MOD office spaces to vendors to create some revenue opportunity. Uh, you don't have to have an interim relocation plan for MOD and you retain the medical center property for collateral for the existing loans and any future loans. The cons is it's certainly the most expensive option at 16.6 million estimate, uh, the medical center cannot be sold because you're using it. Existing MOD portable still has, so the existing campus, if you were to lease it out, there still are some issues that you may need to take care of. Uh, there's significant construction cost for the existing medical center facility just because of its, its age. Um, and it's, it's outside the gates, which for some uh, is seen as a, a deterrent, even though it's very close. The cost estimate for that is again, 16.6 million. And then option three, construct a new 23,000 square foot office building at the MOD campus, renovate vacated space at Gateway and sell the medical center property. We updated the size from 30,000 to 23,000. Some of the pros to that is you're still centralizing GRF and MOD administration in one location, adds some conference room space, provides additional resident space here at Gateway without increasing square footage, avoids temporary relocation of, of MOD, and you still have potential to maybe lease some of the space at the existing MOD office. The cons is you may displace some RV space, requires extended uh, utilities up to a new site. It may impact the contractor lot and uh, existing MOD still needs some renovation. And you lose the, the medical center as collateral for future loans or future resale if you decided. Um, there's also some concern there, uh, especially if you look at the upper lot and the access road to the upper lot goes over uh, East Bay Mud property. It comes in with a price tag of about 18.7 million, but if you did sell the medical center, some of those proceeds could go to offset that cost. And then if we can go to the next one, this slide is really, if, if you did sell the medical center at different price points from 12.5 to 17.5, the market for sale has, has improved since the pandemic. Uh, our last offer was uh, 14.5. So we may be in the, between the 12.5 and, and the 15. And really it, it analyzes what you may net out of that, uh, especially if you, put 5 million on CD or deposit with the bank. <clears throat> and then 
the next uh, slide, the comparison matrix, this really looks at construction estimates for the three options. The sale of the medical center uh, is available for option one or three. You retain the asset in option two. The medical center sales proceeds, uh, net proceeds estimate, uh, putting 5 million on, on deposit, using the balance for construction offset, and then that gives you kind of an estimate for total project cost. <clears throat> Again, noting that option two, you retain that, that asset. So you still have the value of the asset. So in, in summary, you know, we're at this point looking, uh, suggesting that you carefully weigh the, the benefits of centralized administration versus the, the cost of doing that. Consider the long-term use of the medical center property as collateral versus proceeds from a sale. Consider benefits of reuse of space at Gateway versus new construction at Gateway. Evaluate the immediate and future parking and space needs. Consider public uh, input as, as this may proceed. And then any future studies that we may need to undertake before making any final decisions. That's the update. Discussion. Right. So uh, <clears throat> I was I was looking for a fourth option, and maybe it's already here, and, and that might be to tear down the medical center and rebuild their new construction. Mm -hmm. So when you look at option three, I guess that new construction cost would be relatively the same, uh, although you would have yeah. uh, deconstruction costs involved. So yeah, probably I think more. as you look into renovation versus new, we would certainly have to analyze that. The, the thought was to retain that property mm -hmm. to see what, what the value is in, in building new or retaining. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. <laughs> I, I, I'll go on record to say that having future collateral is so valuable to Rossmore because in the event of a natural disaster or some event that we're not fully insured with, that we need to go into financing to reconstruct, whether it's clubhouses or, or whatever we need, having that collateral is so valuable because without it, we don't have any collateral. <laughs> and, and, and that really puts us in jeopardy, especially since we don't have full on earthquake insurance, we don't have full value property insurance, where we're not, there, no insurance on landslides. Uh, so we need to have those funding sources available to us in the future, in my opinion. So option two, even though it looks very expensive, has a real value associated with that collateral. I agree with you. There's a benefit to having the collateral. I think one of the questions that we asked and wasn't, you know, maybe we're still compiling the information is exactly what is our debt profile with and without. And we have this $5 million deposit, which the bank seems to be saying we can use for construction, but you know what, I think we need more clarification on what our debt capacity is with and without to really make a, a decision. But on the surface, I agree with you that having that collateral is does have a value. Okay. And while we're talking about a bank, it would be very interesting to hear what they have to say about re refinancing all of our loans as a bundle mm -hmm. uh, with this project and what that means. Interest rates are coming down. Yep. Uh, so it may be a time to start that discussion. Right. right well, and yes, and as part of that discussion, how much of this project we could do with some sort of financing. I mean, I think doing this out of pocket is yeah, not, yeah. not gonna happen. We're gonna talk about that soon too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so one of the things, and maybe this is just a word thing, um, we talk about an option one, we use the word renovate in some places and rebuild in other places. I know it's not a, Maybe it's not a direct teardown and 
build that up, but what, I, what term is more accurate? Yeah, I, I think it would be a rebuild. You know, <clears throat> really tear down, and but it's in place. So yeah, we can be consistent with. Okay, and I still don't, and maybe this, maybe when we talk about the use of um, space, we get there, but I still don't have a clear picture of what is going to have to stay up at the MOD site versus transferring to the new building, because I think there was some discussion about um, moving the, ser you know, would the servers move? Would we need a building for the servers? Uh, what people or departments have to stay up at the current site? Those types of questions. <clears throat> and maybe that, you know, that's drilling down, certainly, but I think we need to have some discussion about that. Is there any interest in reducing this to two options, or is there, I mean, is there interest oh, in so option one chasing. still uh, in terms of rebuilding MOD, considering the <clears throat> significant cons, especially related to this gateway? gateway site? Or do you want to keep all three still viable right now? I'm good with two. I think that I don't think that the MOD is an option either way of just refurbishing what we have or tear down and rebuilding. All I see is extra congestion up there and and unless we can relocate, unless there's a possibility of tearing down the building and relocating in the upper parking lot out of the way of everything, we're still going to be having the problems that we're going to have. In fact, it might increase by moving 6,000 square. And by the way, when we move the 6,000 square feet, do we have just a ballpark of how many employees that's talking about moving from here? Because that's an increase of cars up there too. Sure. Yeah, well, yeah, and we had- would, I mean, is it like 30 or 50 or something like that? Yeah, and you, you would, that's why you would likely, some of the, the cons to that is you would impact some of the existing contractor lot if, if you went in the upper, because you need greater parking space. And the contractor lot right now is something, and that's crossing East Bay Mud property to get up to the contractor lot, which we don't know about. And uh, and then the contractor lot, although it's not full, is a source of revenue for us right now. It is full. It is full. Oh, it is full. Yeah. Yeah. The, the yeah, rates are yeah, increasing. Rate, we yeah. Yeah. The benefit okay. is that you... Because last time I took a, a little drive through the dirt parking lot, I, I saw some open spots and I thought, oh, we have room for more. <laughs> yeah. the, the benefit is you could maybe move some of those folks and lease out the existing building for some of their, their function. Well, I'm, I'm talking yeah. about if we did one or two or three, what we're utilizing it up there, we're not... Those options are just going to more. You know, all we're moving is impact from one spot to impact to a new spot, without really giving us any kind of freedom and room up there. So that's why I'm saying I look at all that and I'm just thinking, in my opinion, we should only be focusing on two and moving in that direction. That's my opinion because I agree everything with what Dwight said. I'm thinking about the rebuild that could come up in the future on uh, at uh, Sportsman's Park Doble, that whole complex there. The rebuild on the on down the future that we had in the facility master plan for the uh, um, Peacock, uh, the MP3 buildings possibly going two story, or a wider. That building. would go away with with but what I'm, we're talking about. No, no, but I'm just saying right. that it, that could be other boards way down the line uh -huh. that could be coming up because it was on the it was on the wish list of all the people. This is what we need to do. Yeah, the, Two would, would kind of take that off the table because you would gain that equivalent space pretty much where we're sitting right now. It would be repurposed into what, what was identified as need for that two-story. Doesn't take away Dalbo though. No, Hillside's a different Hillside. story. Yeah. 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 yeah, so so in, in, and that's why I agree with what Dwight said. Hillside comes up, where does the money come from to be able to that That's why we need that. And by the, by the time we would be ready, this would be paid down and we would be ready to make another loan to do that, hopefully. Right. <laughs> yeah. so, so I agree with Ted, pursuing option two uh, seems most appropriate to me, but I'm wondering if it isn't a good idea to get feedback from the community at this point in time, uh, because, you know, relocating outside the gate, we don't have a micro transit plan in place mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, would alleviate some of those concerns, I think. Uh, so 
sooner rather than later, having some sort of town yeah. hall event, I think might be appropriate. Yeah, I think that's appropriate. And I think in the past, we've had questions about the capacity of that parking lot um, in terms of housing all the employees. And then if you've got all the services, residents being in and out, and if you move all the meetings there, what that does. And um, so I think we need to. So would you like yeah. one more kind of presentation back really focused on financing of, of capabilities of yes. that facility? I think we need to see, in my opinion, I think we need to see two things. One is we need a much better picture of what the financing implications are of any of this stuff and the capacity to fund things going forward. And two, I think we need to get a better idea of, in general, who goes where and what our needs are still up at the MOD site versus, you know, moving everybody. Sure. Okay. Uh, that type of thing would help me at least. And the end has a question. Oh. Yeah, sorry, two questions. So maybe I missed this, but is the, um, excuse me. Is the renovation of the current MOD built, or is the relocation of MOD during option two, is that included in the estimate that's mm -hmm. here? So option two, cost. you wouldn't need to temporarily relocate MOD because you would they would stay in operation there until new offices are prepared at the medical center. Mm -hmm. And and the people to stay here too. Right. Yeah, yeah. You'd have everybody in place. In place until that building okay. is ready and then you'd move. But to the end question. Here. Do we is that figured into the cost of relocating those people if we I mean I'm not for those options, but one right. or two a uh, one or three, we'd have to relocate people to well to option do those. one, we'd have to relocate the people. Three. Well, no, not in three, not in three, because we'd have we'd have a whole new building going up. Uh, well, yeah, three would be really... three would be a different location than the current uh, somewhere on the campus, but you would oh. not need to relocate. Uh, so those those are in, included um, the cost to kind of estimate to renovate this uh, gateway is is included. You could stage those. You don't have to do everything at one time either. So this could be a multi-phase project. Uh, there's, there's quite a few options within that to consider as well. Now, there's one other item under option two that we haven't identified as potential lease income. Is mm -hmm. probably not. I don't know. I have no idea what it might be, but those numbers are missing from this. For the medical center to lease? Yeah. No, 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 to lease out MOD space that's displaced. Yeah, we haven't gone far enough down that road to really understand how much space would be available compared to, as, as show mentions, how much we would still occupy and what the value that would be. Okay. Well, and have we completely abandoned the option of leasing out, you know, doing this medical office building renovation for us, but still having a portion to lease, is that? I think we've determined that the space available on the first floor really doesn't provide additional space to lease out. Uh, we would have to do the second floor and the basement renovation mm -hmm. as well. It's a significant more cost in order to lease out a portion of, of the main floor. And right now, leasing, uh, this could change yeah. dramatically in the next couple of years, but office space and that sort of space uh, is, there's, if you look at the front page of the East Bay Times today, there's a lot, lot of, of, yeah. lot of empty space. Empty space, yeah, office space is not. So in my, my remembering, the big cost was to put in an elevator. Right, which was fifteen thousand. Yeah. No. Oh, uh, no. Probably no. half a million. Yeah. One hundred and fifty. <laughs> sorry, wrong That's zero. Probably so. even more than <laughs> yeah. that. To, yeah. To gain, it's pretty limited space on, on the second. Floor. So it wouldn't gain as much by doing that. Okay. 
But if you end up building a ground up building over there, maybe you include well, something. That might be the, yeah. It's part of the consideration, I guess. So, so we will come back to you then with more focus on option two and look at a what the overall impact would be or financing would be. Yeah, and then I think we can talk about maybe eliminating some of the options. Well, that also answer focus. your question. Uh, yeah, I just want a more complete estimate. Yeah. And then we'll we'll focus more on uh, what stays and what what moves as well. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Great analysis, um, by the way. Yeah, this really is this is tremendously it's helpful to, bring in to try to drill it down. Start narrowing yeah, it. To, uh, yeah, And I agree. We'll have to throw off probably one of these at some point. Okay. All right. So should we go to the medical center space study? Yeah. So um. Oh, there they Hello, are. David. So Hi. David and is Donna with you too? Yes. There she is. Good morning. Good morning. So we'll just we'll turn it over to David to do the space study. I just want to make sure the sound is working. Can you hear us okay? We need to turn up the volume. I just go ahead. Okay. You can hear us okay now? Yes. Great. Okay. Well, thank you so much uh, to all of you for giving us a few minutes to go through the space planning exercise uh, that we've done uh, earlier this year and which we started the interviews uh, about this time a year ago. Uh, you know, there were, there were questions in the last meeting that we attended about exactly how we got to the space plan. So what we want to show you today is kind of the process that we went through to figure out the adjacencies and all of the needs. Now, we can provide all the documentation that we show today to you guys. You know, we have, you know, all the meeting notes, which is 44 pages worth of meeting notes and the charts and the plans and all of that. And I think, you know, if you really want to get into the weeds on particular issues or adjacencies, it's really helpful to read through that to kind of understand why the decisions have been made. So uh, as an overview for the process, uh, back in late September, early October last year, uh, we spent... I think four different days meeting with all of the departments that have been in consideration to being located in this uh, Rossmore City Hall complex. Uh, they were landscaping, trust maintenance, HR, news TV, public safety, administration, member records, mutual board office, IT departments, building maintenance, finance accounting, alterations, resales inspections, and resident services. So we met with all of those groups and obviously, you know, there's a, you know, there's a broad base of opinions of what everyone needs. Uh, you know, we asked them how their facility was working currently, what they projected for the next 10 and 20 years in terms of whether they saw any growth and what special things that they needed in their facilities, because some departments like IT or news TV, they have very specific requirements for their spaces. Uh, so out of that, uh, process, we were able to aggregate the information into a series of charts and diagrams. And that's what Donna is going to walk you through. Um, feel free to ask us questions along the way. Uh, you know, there's a lot of minutia that goes on th with this. And I think, uh, you know, one of the questions always comes down to how did we decide adjacencies? And we'll try to explain that. You know, obviously everyone pretty much wanted to be right next to accounting and everyone can't be right next to accounting. <laughs> So there's some give and take, right? So, uh, but, you know, we found, as, as Jeff said, that the combined program of all of these uh, groups essentially fills up the approximately 23,000 square foot floor plate of the existing medical office. And if we were to build a new ground up building, it would be essentially the same. So Donna, why don't you uh, take it away? Good morning, everyone. Um, so as David mentioned, the first step was to interview these 13 departments go over their their needs for space, the number and types of offices, um, whether they needed specific um, needs like storage or meeting rooms, um, and then going over adjacencies and whether they have interactions with residents. Um, and some of the main takeaways were in general, a need for additional meeting rooms of varying capacities. Uh, uh, more efficient adjacencies for departments that work closely together. Um, and that took us to 
just mapping out uh, an adjacency diagram to show just basically how everything would be laid out um, in terms of departments being close together. Um, the ones that have to be close to the lobby, like public safety alterations and resales, um, which have a lot of resident interaction. Um, we were considering all departments moving news, for example, needed uh, a large warehouse space as part of their amenities. Um, HR requested a more private suite. Um, as David mentioned, a lot of departments asked for proximity to finance and accounting. Uh, so this was just kind of a visual for um, how everything would get laid out. Um, then we moved into this first scheme. Um, so the this area here, which is the current pharmacy space, would group the alterations and resales, mutuals, and member records coordinators, again, for um, easy access to the lobby where residents don't need to go through the entire building to um, to meet with whoever they're meeting it with. Um, same thing for the public safety desk services um, directly off of the reception. This scheme did include a board room off of the lobby as well. Um, administration department was in a centralized location and then everything else is, I won't get into detail unless you have questions, but basically just mapping out the needs of each department and um, trying to get the adjacencies to work. And the team news was moving. And like I said, they had their need for an easily accessible news warehouse. Uh, which based. Uh, based on feedback we received, uh, we moved into the second scheme which explored um, the idea of having, utilizing the second floor and the basement by adding an elevator and upgrading the stairs um, to see what that would get us. Um, I'll go through some of the main changes. Um, the, there were concerns about the adequacy of the existing parking. Um, so we removed one of the boardrooms and it was decided that um, the mutuals meetings would be held within the gates and that allows us to have the mutual board's office in that east space instead. Um, similar layout with, for the rest of it with, with the forward facing offices like alterations and resales and public safety right off the reception. Um, there was a request for more meeting space by all the departments so we sprinkled those throughout um, as well as copy rooms, kitchenettes, one of the big changes here is um, if news were to remain in the current location, which was one of the one of the direction items that we got, it would open up the potential for a leasable space. And what was used for as the news warehouse would become a delivery storage area for the a common area for the building. Um, other changes were more minor, like switching out some of the um, some of the departments based on their need for proximity to the reception. Um, second floor would house a portion of the uh, member records um, department, additional meeting space and kitchenette and copy room. And the basement would allow, um, would allow us to use uh, that space, which is below the boardroom, as a large common break room for all departments. Um, so that's the quick walkthrough. And so we were asked, you know, a question about essentially, okay, if we can we fit everything without the elevator, and the answer essentially is we can if we use if we take up that leasable area in that corner and we move the things from the basement up in the and the second floor down. And so that all fits within the 23,000 square feet you just sacrificed the leasable area. So this is, you know, this this represents, I think, we, we were mostly able to meet everyone's uh, needs in terms of adjacencies. Uh, I think we were able to meet most of the needs for meeting rooms. I mean, there is gonna be some sharing going on, um, but I think, you know, a lot of people, because they're dispersed in different places, the fact that they're just all in one building really helps general adjacency because now instead of being 
in a completely different part on the Rossmore campus, you were just down the hall. So even if you're not directly adjacent, you're still a lot closer than you were previously. So um, yeah, please let us know if you have any questions. Okay. So I, I, I think it might be a small item, but I don't see Securitas anywhere. And to me, that's another one that should have immediate uh, availability to residents. Did I miss uh, it? Public safety. Or is that Tom Cashon or is that Securitas? Those are the Securitas um, like fill. RFID. Okay. So, so that would move out of that building. Yeah, yes, yeah, so that's a great question. Like, you know, we we thought that, you know, we would relocate the sort of everyday interactions would occur in this building in terms of getting an RFID card. But you are correct that Securitas needs a presence within the gates and they would remain there because their staff obviously is is on campus doing the patrols. So there doesn't it doesn't make sense for them to do it from here. So it would be divided up. Okay. I'm confused by that. So it's basically, they have a lot basically of their... the little office that's near Creekside. Yeah, yeah. I think that moves, correct? Just the front transactional part. Right. Not Steve. Tags. Not Steve, not Kim, the managers, the EMTs, they do the reporting. Yeah. After calls, there's, they would remain. They would have a guest yes. presence yes. for interaction with, with residents for what they do in terms of RID tags. Okay. Uh, so they would probably have like one person at a desk, right? Yeah, I mean, it's more like just my concern about moving everybody off campus is what if there is an emergency on campus and accessibility to some of these people. So I just want to throw that out as a something to that we should be thinking about as we're but that's why so the people that are here don't deal with the response mm -hmm. it's the it's the transactional service center. yeah but if you go back to that you know that flip book that tom cashin gave us and who goes where and mm -hmm. of the senior management team it, there is some importance for having those people ex you know i know it's not that far away but you know yeah, it is it yeah absolutely. yeah i mean i think we should be thinking about that that's all i'm gonna throw that out Any other? Do we yeah. do we know who is uh, who is the most expensive or hardest ones to move? I'm thinking like, I mean, you know, like <laughs> is, is the TV station is that? And I was just looking to yeah, see where they're at. Are they, the they're not going to move? move. Okay, that's that okay. Yeah, it okay. seems like that would be a very expensive. It is is another one where you know we'd have to really the look at yeah. in terms of connection or do they stay there or both? That's, that's one to answer. Because they need their own I, IT needs a, they need a fiber connection. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not sure if this building has fiber or not. I think, you know, when we were looking at this, we our base assumption was that the servers would stay on campus and the IT personnel would work, you know, remotely from here. Hmm. Okay. I think we need to move on. All right. Uh, yes. Thank you for this. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for having us. All right. Thank you very much. Um, so then we are moving on to the food and beverage study update. Oh, somebody's sharing. I'm gonna cut off Dana so I can just get this There we go. I know it's going to take a while. So I'm just going to share the document that's part of the um, <clears throat> agenda packet that gives an update on the work that we've done so far with Synergy. <clears throat> and so I'll just go through it really briefly. Excuse me, I'm going to lose my voice in the middle of this, I think. But um, <clears throat> when we started working with them, uh, what we liked about them was that they were willing to zig and zag a little bit if this project took turns. So you're going to see with the deliverables, there are a few things that they added for us, uh, which has been very um, helpful. Um, but we started off with um, having them help us with getting the message out about what we were doing and why we were doing. So um, some of their first deliverables were the articles that appeared in the Rossmore News and helping us with um, like producing the flyers so we could get them out about the survey that we, that we put out to the community. Um, another um, element early on, so this happened in May, was a, a market trends discovery tour. So um, 
the cast of characters got in a couple of bands now. So um, it was actually a really very interesting tour that was set up by Synergy for um, the committee members to go and take a look at different food service concepts. And so it was really um, quite an educational experience. I think everyone can agree. I know we talked about it and we had a presentation at this meeting the day after that. Um, which was also one of the deliverables. And so a lot of information from that, um, you'll, you'll see it inform some of the questions of the stakeholder interviews. Um, but one of the other surveys that we, one of the other deliverables was the survey. And we had um, over 1300 complete surveys that were received. Um, and there were some, there was a high level um, takeaway from the surveys that was also presented at the May 9th meeting. There were stakeholder interviews that took place. We had 20, I think there were 14 to date. We still have others that we can add to that. Um, they said they would do up to 20 of them for us. Um, and so what they've done is like through all these things, they've been kind of extracting all the different common themes. And then they took those um, and also made presentations to small groups. And I think this was in July and again, took notes from those as well. And then they followed up with the project team and they put together kind of this, a draft vision briefing. And so that's something that the project team, which has um, board member, a couple of committee members uh, took a look at it. They've kind of boiled down to a concept that we need to now, like the upcoming deliverables, um, we're gonna be meeting this afternoon. Uh, to talk about that vision brief and to see if that is what we'd like to proceed and then kind of form a town hall around. Um, and then it'll be a little bit more of a fuller vision brief. And so then what that does, it gives you all of these things that you see bulleted below with a strategy for theme, the program plan designed to serve um, like all of the community, um, menu approach, technology opportunities, um, kitchen requirements. So it gives us a lot of understanding of what it would take in order to um, achieve this. And so and there's a little bit more refinement that they do with the project team um, in order to do this presentation, by the way. So there's a little bit back and forth we have to go with them to refine this vision. Um, and then everything's packaged up in a final report. So we're kind of at the point, these last few things will go pretty quickly once we just, once we agree upon kind of the vision that they presented to us initially. So we believe we'll probably be scheduling a town hall before the end of this year. Um, a lot of it depends on <coughs> what happens after this meeting in our next discussion. But we're at we're an exciting crossroads. Good. Yes. yes. And maybe I'm reading this incorrectly, but when I see task six food and beverage vision brief, it seems like it's kind of boiling things down to exactly what the recommendation may be. Is that premature to, to or, or they're out of order to do a town hall after that rather than gathering community input before you get to a finalized vision brief? And I think that's one of the discussions you want to have because I, so you, I think you were, um, on your way somewhere. Was out. Yes. When we mm -hmm. met with them to talk about what it was, and it's actually rather broad. So it's not like this is the specific. Yeah. You're talking about a concept based on what this, so there are other findings that they have, right? About like what our market can support essentially. Okay. And so it is kind of broad. And then there was that back and forth. And I think that's some of the discussion. How much of it do we want to have articulated at the town hall or how much do we want to have feedback on? So that is a decision point for the leadership. Thank you. Any other questions? We've got to get to the fun stuff. Okay, let's go. New business, introduction of the 2025 capital projects. Okay, so um, this is an introduction mm -hmm. um, in the start of our capital projects budget process. And so you have, um, for those of you that printed it out, it's a rather large stack of paper and you have essentially four different attachments to it. And so what I wanna do is um, just give you the overview and then we can kind of open them and look at them. So the first set of attachments that you have are individual project sheets. So for all the different projects we're proposing for 2025, and those include projects that are carried over from this year as well as new projects, and there aren't really many of those. 
Um, but what we wanted to do is we wanted to put them in a format so you can kind of look at just the project based on its own merit. And this is something that we developed by the time we went to the board last year, but we did. hoping it's a good tool for the committee to work with. And I would say, since it is a new tool, I think you know my style is, it's pretty collaborative. So if you see things that you wanna have clarified, you want more information, you don't agree with kind of the methodologies we use for priorities, which was a bit informed by a cool pyramid that Dwight uh, presented at one of the meetings, um, you know, please give us that feedback and we can kind of can do more work on these and bring them back to, back to you. But essentially what we did for, um, you know, I'm going to just, because I maybe put them, yeah, I think I'm just going to pull up so people can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I guess I got to share my screen then. Um, yeah, so I'll just go ahead and share with you our, there you yeah, go. so this is, so just so uh, I'm just gonna do this so people can see. So there's a full sheet for each project. And so what we did for each project, we have a priority system. So you'll see a priority. And if the project can be delayed based on, and it could be anything like getting bids, like the time it would take to get bids and get something completed. So for priority ones, those are projects that have a safety regulatory or some other mandated requirement. We also included um, projects that are in progress and that were already removed as already kind of placed as a priority by the board in subsequent years. So pickleball was one of those, right? So it's, it's at priority three as a one. Um, twos are those that maintain existing capital infrastructure and they're not mandatory, but you know, when you defer this stuff, um, it could either impact the service level, the condition um, of capital assets and the, the capital asset could decline. A three, a priority three is a project that will increase covered service levels. So those could include new facilities, um, expanding facilities or other new initiatives and are actively in the process of being evaluated and studied, right? So we haven't started any construction, we're not committed to anything, but we're in a study process. And then fours are capital projects that are proposed to increase the current service level. It could be a new facility, it could be expanding facilities um, or some other new initiative, which hasn't yet been started. You're also going to see um, a project description. So just, or I'm so sorry, a project summary. So that's to the right of the priority section. And what we wanted to do for these is to make sure you could just look at it and see, oh, that's the cost projected for 2025. Um, we do want people to know when the project started. So you can easily see, oh, this has been lingering for three years or it just started last year. Um, estimated completion. We will always put that in there. And there's there's like three different categories which are ongoing because there's always something that comes up for that and pavement is one of those. We also um, have the project location indicated and we let you know who the managing department is. Um, then we try to do a project description for you and it gives a little bit an example of why we're doing the project, why we're asking for the project. Below that um, is the, we give you the snapshot of the budget and the five year projected on that line item, um, but we give you some history on it. So we, and pavement is a little bit of a false one because we do pavement every year. So, but we're not gonna do it from the time we started doing pavement. So we look at this as the five year um, snapshot. So we do let you know the five year estimated cost of that asset. Uh, we let you know the total life of something that's approved. And you're gonna see this on things like pickleball where we know when we started, how much we've expended in prior years what we're carrying, so what is remaining from already approved by the board, and then what is the additional request we need to do the work we um, are projecting to do in 2025. We'd like to put a brief community benefit or a, com a community impact statement for each of the projects, um, a statement on benefits versus risks of proceeding or stalling the project, and any type of additional fiscal considerations. Um, you're also going to see some dependencies and if we have a history of some of them it's good for us just to kind of track like the year it was approved um kind of things where there may have been board actions in case we just need to go back it's a nice little history on when this started and when it was approved um you're also going to see in the packet we do have these um if i just share this will it share it oh it does okay uh, we also summarize the projects and we have it kind of two ways. We have it by the way that's going to be listed in the budget. And then we just did a priority too. It's just a helpful little tool. 
And at the bottom, we also have how much each of those we're requesting and what the total cost is for the year. Where's the third thing? And then we have the um, budget, and then you're also going to see that we did the um, cash flow, the cash cash flow, flow. projection based on these these projects. Right. Okay. Which I don't know if you want to get into those or if you just even want to start discussing them, but this is your whole pile of work to evaluate things. And I'm happy to go through each of the projects if you want, just so you can see the review or we can look at it from the budget, which gives you them indicated without the different details. I don't think we need to go through a lot of de I'd rather work from the, the budget. The budget? Sheet. Okay. I don't know about you guys. Do you have Questions about the various projects you want to work from the yeah because this is budget sheet because yeah. we can also we can end up in what you're going to see is many of these are carryovers right mm -hmm. so why don't I just let me just show you the budget sheet and I'm just going to so, for oh. the purpose of clarification yeah. when we say it's carrying over from one year to another how how is that how does that impact funding. <clears throat> I mean, does that mean the dollars are flowing or not? I think that's a so essentially the carryover question. in the budget, the way I'm using it is so the board and this has been something we've gone back and forth with yeah, like yeah. on um, MOD because we didn't have certain funds approved and I was showing them. So that was it's great. Right. So I think we have everything synced up with the same methodology. So a carryover in funding means that the board approved. So let's look at one of these. So if you look at it at the top of the budget, the proposed capital budget sheet, mm -hmm. you'll see like for roof replacement, the total life that you approved as a board was 165,000. We, so the prior years, by the way, could include 2024 when you look at that. So by the end of this year, our projected is I think we're gonna spend 10 because we need to do some engineering, which means that we still have 155 that you approved for that project. And it's still sitting in cash. It's still hitting in cash. So it's in the same yep. fund. It doesn't yep. sit in another fund. Yep. And quite frankly, um, in the past, you've had things which are approved and you said, you know what, we're going to defer some higher priority project. So it's still, it's there. it doesn't matter if it's carried over. You can say, it doesn't matter, Ann, I'm only going to give you 50,000 for this year, even though there was 100 in there. Right. So all of these, basically all of those things are going to be dynamic. But it's just so you know, just from the life of the project, where we are in expending, what was approved, in what is remaining for that project. Thanks. I think that helps to clarify, yeah. you know. A good one to look at, just to see, is pickleball, right? Yep. So, and so for pickleball, the total life approved budget so far has been 2,900,000. So prior year, so this will be including 2024, a little over 700 will be, have been expended, which means that of that original 2.9, you have 2.183 remaining. So if our estimate is correct and we need 3,175 to build the thing, we would need an additional 991. Thank you. Could I ask some questions before we dig into this? No. <laughs> <laughs> Say please. So, so when I look at the facilities master plan, there was a line item titled capital budget projection that throughout the upcoming 10 years was about $2 million a year. Is that now included in this, these capital projects? And Jeff is nodding yes. <laughs> so we had that, so you're starting to kind of build that out, what was in those projects. So we're like paving, roof replacement, all those, yeah. those, all those yeah. things that we kind of rolled up into a one number. That massive spreadsheet of basically the reserve study right. for GRF is include is anticipated here. Right. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, this is it's just provides you with more detail, more actual project by project. Project by project. Right. 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 Speaking of projects. Yes. So we talked about food and beverage. I didn't see anything in here related to food and beverage. No, that's correct. That's correct. Yeah. And yeah. so you, and so I'll also point you to another line item with is there's nothing with MOD replacement. Right. right? That was my the that was what I was gonna yeah because you're creating the budget now. And so I think this is where depending on the option, vacate space, we're gonna get a little bit more information from synergy 
and I and even I think potential costs, like if we were going to, you know, On like what we beverage. need to be prepared for, so we can program stuff in it, but we don't have enough information to put that in here. Now, do we want to put a line? If you want me to like add a project, even if it isn't funded yet, well, my, we can well, do that. my concern is the lease at Creekside is up at the end of 2025, yeah. and and if we have nothing in the budget for 2025 for capital needs, where does that leave us? So, in my mm -hmm. opinion, we should be anticipating something. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I think certainly we should have a line item for the MOD replacement somewhere in here, even though yeah. we don't have, you know. So that is in there. It's just there's no, um, we just need direction on funding. And do, because yeah, we're yeah, still with the the MOD replacement. Well, the line is here. Yeah, there's just. Yeah, we took out, we had. We had funding dollars in there, before, in there before. but as we just kind of showed you, those could be dramatically, well, yeah. depending on where you go, also how you end up, obviously that's that's not a project we can fund just from the MTF. No, no. Uh, so having that kind of skews your okay. overall vision of this when you're looking at, do we have resources to- Yeah, because at one point we money. had it in the whole cash flow computations yeah. and it and drew, you're right it dramatically affected it, it yeah. skews it so yeah. until so you really know. know what direction you're going in what like we're going to bring back to you next month uh, how you can potentially fund that it, it dramatically changes your view of this document so we thought that until there was more definition it was better to leave out Plus, we have, excuse me, Ted, yep. funds that we may need to expend with ELS or wherever as we explore more of this right. are, are funded so by the, the we deposit. We still have that deposit. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 963000 Still, I can't remember what sheet it's on. But it, it's on the bash That well. was maintained, but not any expenditures. Right, so. right, right. Yeah. Ted, you had a... So Dwight brought up a good point on the food and beverage piece of it is that, you know, we have two months till we have to renegotiate the lease on, on Creekside. No, we have, we have a we year, have a year. year in two months. Okay, a year and oh, two months. Oh, okay. I thought it was Oh, a year so it's 20, 20. So their, their option is, is at the, at his option to go through 25. So it doesn't expire at the end of this this year. Okay. Well, it could. He could. He has to say. So, so even, even to the same point, I think that the food and beverage is going to come back with a big scope of what Rossmore needs are all over the place. Some of them right. are not in existence right now and could cost us money to do, which is down the line. Well, you know, as we, it's a document that we will see how we can fill these in. But it is, but that one piece of it is a, if we had to, I would hate to be caught short of knowing how we have to handle that situation. And if I remember reading in there, it was looking, re-looking at the lease that is there and what is the, what we might want to look at for a new lease if we had to do a new lease. So at least that part of it should be pushed through, I think a little faster than the whole project being done. You, you understand yeah. what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. We don't, it's an unknown. You, you never know what could happen, right? It, I just don't know how you would adequately account for that with a plug number in, in terms of capital and facilities. It would be updating the agreement or looking at a new agreement or what a new vendor may require in tenant improvements or, or looking at other facilities that they may identify. It, pick, I know. I, mean, I, I know. It's like pick a number: a two million, uh, fifty thousand. I don't know. No, no. But I, I could we? I'm tra talking about separating out that one piece out of the whole project. And the food and beverage project. Yeah, the food and beverage project. The, food, the, and the, food and beverage project. the lease is speed separate. that one piece up, so we would have something that we could think about and know how to proceed with that piece of it if we had to. Because I know they're going to come back with a, seeing what they've been doing and the kind of talks they're doing. They're talking about a whole, you know, Rossmore yeah. of a, all these other yeah. things going on, which we probably are not going to be able to do right now. Those are going to be ongoing over years. But we do have an existing thing that we had that 
we don't know that we might have to deal with right away. And I would like to have the information from them that says this is the uh, current climate and what it should be done. And here's what it should look like when you do it and everything in case we had to do that. I mean, does that make sense? Because that's only one piece yeah, of I think it. We're just, and we're, it's an we're existing in a, We're in a food and beverage discussion right now. <laughs> yeah. No, and, you and brought it least, up. I mean, you're discussing well, what you so brought just, up. So just, so just, and you know, that's the lease, a piece of it that I think yeah. that should be done sooner than later. The and, lease is being evaluated. Yeah. Just so you know, it is being evaluated. It's been, been like, we've been working more on an administrative level. And so we've got to get a meeting with, there's a guy named Clyde, who's Synergy's expert on that. And that's a little bit, Again, it's a little bit different than the other vision that'll mm -hmm. impact capital. Although, sure, if I mean we're working with Stan now, we believe he's extending at least through next year, and we can talk to him based on what we think the timing is of the other thing. So I think that's it. We want to make sure that we just don't want to be caught in service. Sure, I agree with Ted with the, the yeah. lease evaluation, but I also believe we should have some number I think we should in the have something budget. in here. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what. Yeah, I mean, pick a number. Jeff. <laughs> I mean, so, yeah, and I have two questions for you, right? So in the priorities, these kind of fell under there. The capital projects, we haven't moved forward on them. We're still kind of in the forming and deciding. They're as threes. Do you want to keep them as threes or do you want any of these new projects to change priority? So think about those. I don't need right, to answer yeah, this. I don't need to answer this one. I had another question if I could. Yes. So um, lawn bowling has been a favorite topic of mine. <laughs> oh, it came up at the budget. Hearing. I thought I read that. Yes. And, and so there's a tremendous amount of water use with lawn bowling. And we spend all, over 200 grand now a year on maintaining uh, lawn bowling. And, and I thought there were several requests along the way that, that would make it into the pipeline for capital projects. But I didn't see anything in here about a potential project for lawn bowling artificial turf. We can, we can look at that. Yes, I think that. So you mean artificial artificial turf? Mm -hmm. Yes. Converting. And one more question if I could. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry. It's okay. So the lake liner, oh I choked when I saw that number. Mm -hmm. And and well, so is the study guess. complete? No. The study is not complete, but yet we want to plug a million one when into will... next year. I, I just, I wonder the timing of that, if that's something that we need to wait. I mean, I think it, it, I think it could be deferred. I don't, it's so you can see it's not one of the most, I mean, it's critical in that we are losing, you know, we are losing water, right? Because the liner is, yeah. is failing, um, but we have some due diligence to do with environmental agencies and all that kind of fun stuff. So that's the word. Just know that in my mind, I'm thinking 2026, but okay. we're not making decisions for the, this for the actual replacement. Right. Yeah. Yeah. When, when are we going to get the I mean, results of this study? You've also, uh, in uh, your, this fits into your pyramid uh, that you showed us, Dwight, that um, we don't know what damage is being done from the spillway to where the water appears out of the ground. Mm -hmm. And that could be a potential safety hazard or or what I I'm not I don't you know I mean I just know I see the water flowing out of there mm -hmm. down away from the from the uh, pond so I don't know what damage is doing underneath right and how long can you we know, go on with that so I think that I, that's the part I want to see on the study is I think the study will tell us how urgent we need to move on something like that that would be good to know yes I'm done for <laughs> okay, thank you. Any other comments, questions, comments on these? I just want to elaborate or ask a question. Based on what Dwight said about the maintenance line on the facilities master plan, those items on that plan, they're not all itemized here. So where does that figure get added into the budget? So it, it wouldn't, everything that would be included in 2025 is listed out here. So there's no additional that would be in that. As we look towards 2026, 27 in those, the, they need to be populated still, right? But you have that, 
kind of have that accounted for, right? Well, pavement, pavement is the biggest part of all that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It would be good to see that big spreadsheet. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's it's still a master plan. Yeah. Need a name for that. The big spreadsheet. The big spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah. The reserve well, replacement. I, I would call it reserve replacement or something to that effect. But was that done as a? Uh, I mean, because sometimes when those are done, they're done as vision documents, but they don't have the specificity. So I don't know no, how that is... one was approached. Well, Unless I'm thinking of something different. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. There's a lot of specificity. All right. That's a tough word, you know. Ooh, it's really hard. All right. All right. So, what do we need to do with this? Do we need to study? Okay. I don't know. Well, essentially, this is what's happening. So, kind of what you're doing now. Okay. So, if you were to look at these, there may be things which are missing. So, I identified we want to do something for food service improvement. Okay. So, put, so we did. So, I, we want to add that. Um, you want us to look at lawn bowling. Mm -hmm. We need to take a look at the uh, lake liner. I'll talk to Fred and get a little bit more of the timeline of the issues with that. Um, we just got the go ahead on that. That was just one of the last of the projects that was approved even to start the study. So it may take them into next year, which means we would have to push it into 2026. So, um, so let me find out a little bit more about that. And I would say, at the next meeting, if there is, hopefully we'll have more information on these and figure out how to address the food service mm -hmm. element on this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then it just becomes, uh, it becomes a, a conversation and direction from you on things. And I would say, particularly with the new projects that are at the bottom of the spreadsheet, every one of these with the exception of Buckeye Tennis Court 7 and 8, were projects that were not funded, but were on the list. Yes. But you'll see that it says the project start. It's just because just because it was on a list, if it wasn't funded, it's not a carryover. Right. Got it. So, you know, so they're they're three requests and broken up a little bit differently. Um, and then there's future projects, things that we do know are going to come at us in the future. So um, there is a underground tank up at MOD. Right, right. The nice thing is it's double hulled, which means it doesn't, it wasn't under the same timeline to be removed from being underground. So we have time on that. And then as fuel is changing, what we're trying to do and what Martine wants to do is like to take the year and just kind of project with fleet. Like what happens with our fleet? How much is it gonna turn over to different energies, EV? Mm -hmm. Because that's a different capital project, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And if we're relocating where MOD is. Exactly. Where, like, so there's so much, that's dynamic around that, that we just need to make sure we give it time until we know the direction we're going on in fuel, mm -hmm. which will mean fleet, and then right. where we're located. So, so possibly work. if we were going to EV, the maybe the fuel at the uh, maintenance yard in the Gulf could handle the extra stuff and we don't have to do it. Yeah, because the idea is like you just close that down yeah. mm -hmm. and you just fuel from the yeah. yeah. Because we already have, yeah, yeah. So we have the second yeah. slide. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of this stuff that is so interrelated yeah. and mixed hard yeah. moving pieces yeah exactly so if you're making a list and we already talked about it previously but the, the hopeful analysis on uh, erp um, is a big part of this yes yeah, so if you look at next week yeah yeah so we it's, really need to know what the impact is on mm -hmm. that would really be helpful so that number in in that is included. So it is the top of the carryover projects, mm -hmm. the next week implementation, mm -hmm. and so this is Todd's um, evaluation that was initially approved is adequate, and so he gave us the breakdown on what we were going to spend this year, and then it will be five forty four four seventy two next year. Yeah. Okay. So, we'll, yeah. 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 Thank you. Um, I know we're not into cash flow right now, but do you want to take a look at? Well, you sure? I got it. Should we? Um, just Here some we. preliminary thoughts. We're 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 short by about a million two for twenty twenty five to get mm -hmm. done. Um, I saw two things. One, we reduced the MTF collections, and 
obviously needs a little more discussion, I think, but reducing MTF collections by 45 going into the future every year seems a little pessimistic. Mm -hmm. That's about 600 grand um, of MTF revenue that we've removed from that cash flow analysis. And then of course, uh, if we move the lake liner, I'm happy. <laughs> we, can, we can do yeah. what we want to do with pickleball and, and a couple new projects that we're just talking about. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so this is the cash flow prepared for here for this group, planning committee. Mm -hmm. And so now what I'm now what I need to do is to have the projected numbers agree when we talk to finance. So this is again, it's gonna be yes. like, it's gonna whack again, everybody in sync. Um, but you do have so the year to date column. The year to date approved and the projected. The, so the projected is updated versus the last cash flow that was presented at finance. Mm -hmm. And then everything from 25 to 29, um, you know, that's all new because we're not, you know, we don't go to 29 with the last one. And this is so the 2025 has everything we're asking for in capital. Mm -hmm. And then there's kind of a for the 26 through 29 placeholders because a lot of times we don't see those right. things come up. Um, that need to, to be there. And so what we did on this, and I think what we'll end up doing is if we do have a capital, one of the capital projects, we're gonna list it separately because I think it's, they're so big and so impactful that we need to track them. So we moved the MOD replacement. It was on its separate, it still had it separate, not in this cash flow, but in the projects it was separate. Mm -hmm. So we moved that as a major capital just to track it. Mm -hmm. And so we're gonna list them here as well. Okay. So we'll update this so it has the food service project okay. as one of those two, just as a separate line item. So we can play with it because I think those are the things. And so this is the first time we've seen this where it takes the 5 million and 5 million in future years just away from MOD because we didn't know what option we were using. Um, and it just gave us, gave, I think it provides a better snapshot so you can figure out, or finance can figure out what they're going to do with MTF. And also, what's the better, best way to finance, to pay as you go, any of these big visionary projects that come along? Um, so I guess I would. And you're I welcome would, to disagree. And I, I, I would ask that the finance committee take a fresh look at that yeah. 375 versus 400, 400 420. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if we're at 375 for the next five years, no, we're in trouble. We're in, we are in trouble. No, we can't be there. Yeah. We can't be there. Because you're not going to fund, you're not going to finance 100. percent Yeah. Well, and that just no. if it stays at 375, that means there's a dire real estate problem in Prosper. Uh huh. And, and I'm not convinced of that yet. I agree. Okay. Anything else? So all these will be you have what you need yeah, to and all these come will back be updated to us for you, so we can look at that, and we'll add the uh, facilities master plan. Okay. Big spreadsheet. Sure. Yes. Quick question, James. The numbers in red. I did. I did those just so I could make. So I would remember to tell you. So any of those things are their estimates, right? Because we don't know for sure. I mean, really, um, we're there. Were everybody's getting better at looking at the future projections? Um, but we just want to make sure those are the numbers that we typically need to have in there for like the standard upkeep and equipment replacement that occurs on an annual basis. All right. Anything Machinery else? and equipment. We no but detail yet. We can bring that. I, I did because it was an introduction. I didn't want to get into the details, but we can bring that up the next month. Okay. So next month we'll have a lot more details about a lot of this. Well, certainly, well, certainly, certainly. Yeah. yeah. yeah we'll add, add some. I mean, we'll we'll talk about it and detail. fine tune it. Yeah. 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 So we'll okay. tell Todd to keep his presentation short. So. Does that meet the timeline yes, of? When are you looking for? Oh yeah, when do we have to look for this? So what we've done is introduce it in December and then approve it in January. Um, so if that timeline still works for the board, I think we're so there might be two more planning out. meetings before so the have, December board meeting. Yeah. Oh, uh, you'll have no, just one. Just just November. Well, November. Just November. Oh, we don't. We don't. We don't have a December. We don't have a November. Because the board meeting is December, yeah, first yeah. Thursday That's of December. Right. So they meet before you in December. So mm -hmm. one more planning committee meeting. Yeah, we should be able to. Yeah, I think so. Don't you? Yeah. Leanne had a question or comment. Oh, I agree with the question. 
Does the chair of the planning committee get the choice of a December planning meeting? Of course they do. You did last year. Because <laughs> we did, as I recall, we had one last year because of getting jammed up on the yeah. timing. So I think that's a yeah, the, in the I board. think that's a good question. And I think we'd be prone to do that in order to facilitate the process. Yeah, and, and especially if the board that's what I was trying in to their do. review on December the first Thursday in December has anything they want to send back to planning. Right. Oh, it's right. going to have to yeah. go back. Right. 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 Okay. Right. So I do think we need okay. to let's let's definitely have plan on it. Okay. Let's plan on it. This finance Thank will you. meet. <laughs> they will meet this in October and they'll meet um, in yeah. October and then they will December meet December second or something. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, first Tuesday in December, I guess. The first Tuesday in December and because there's December. no November. Okay. No, uh, end of month on December. Yeah, it's so so darn so holidays. You know, right? <laughs> Not sure how they're going to November financials. Look at, but November. Yeah, well, that's the whole other story. <clears throat> okay, so, so yeah, anything else on this? It will be the third and you will be the fourth. Okay, but I think we definitely would like to have December. Okay. Yeah. All right, so now. The very patient residence <laughs> forum. Anybody? No, we don't have anyone. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you for being here. I would say something really positive. <laughs> Go for well, it. Well, then, by all means. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can I just do it from here? Carol, she, she could say something. Yeah. yeah, of course. I just want to say that we so much appreciate what you've done for the pickleball courts, the existing ones, because it made such a huge difference. And all the members are so appreciative. Good. Good. Excellent. Thank you. Had him on the back. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. you. Okay. Um, oh. Well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> we are finished. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, oh, we got four more items. Okay. okay, so we are adjourned. I have to move.